Hi there and welcome back to GSC at Home. My name is Katie and today I'm going to be continuing your tour of our solar system with my favourite, well it's not just one, it is four, four dwarf planets, Ceres, Eris, Haumea and Mackie Mackie. I am not going to be including Pluto in this video because I think it deserves one of its very own. Now, the discovery of two of these dwarf planets, Aries and Mackie Mackie, are actually responsible for the demotion of Pluto. Well, maybe not them themselves, but the International Astronomical Union. It's a group of astronomers who are the authority on naming and classifying celestial objects or objects in space. And we kept finding lots and lots of planet-like objects out there in our solar system. So many that we couldn't call them all planets. So we had to come up with a new classification. And that's where the International Astronomical Union came in. And they made up some rules for a planet. What makes a planet a planet? Now, in an earlier video of GSC at Home, Veronica and Natalie told us exactly what those rules are. So let's have a look. Well, you've got to follow three rules to be a planet. We have eight planets in our solar system. We also have dwarf planets. So we have to think about what actually does make a planet a planet. You've got to follow three rules, okay? Rule number one, you've got to be going around something, okay? Something in our solar system. Do you know what it could be? Is it a star? It is a star, the sun. So you have to be going around the sun to be a planet. Number two is that you have to be big enough to pull yourself into a nice round ball. We call this hydrostatic equilibrium Ooh, in science. That's a fancy word. And you've got to make sure you're big enough to be in a nice ball shape. So what is rule number three? Rule number three is that you have to be the boss of your orbit. You've got to be what we call gravitationally dominant. You have to have cleared a path out of your way. <laughs> and all of our eight planets have done that. They've made quite clear paths. Sometimes Jupiter pulls things into its path because it is so massive, but we let it get away with it. But Pluto lives in a place called the Kuiper Belt, and lots of things live in the Kuiper Belt, things like comets. So there are lots of things out there. It hasn't cleared them all away, so it's not gravitationally dominant. So it does not pass the third rule, so it is a dwarf planet. So all of the dwarf planets I'm talking about today are big enough to pull themselves into a sphere or ball-like shape. They all orbit a star, our sun, but none of them are strong enough gravitationally to clear their path. And that's why we call them dwarf planets. Ceres is the closest dwarf planet to our Earth, and it's the only one that orbits in the inner solar system. The inner solar system is everything inside the asteroid belt. That includes Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, and the asteroid belt itself. The three others, Eris, Halmea, and Mackie Mackie, they orbit in the Kuiper belt, which is past Neptune, towards the edge of our solar system. Now, both the Kuiper belt and the asteroid belt, they are full of other stuff. Asteroids, meteors, comets, ice, rocks, and none of our dwarf planets are gravitationally strong enough to push these other objects out of the way. And that's why we call them dwarf planets. The other things that they have in common are that they are all terrestrial or rocky, like our planet Earth. Eris, Halmea and Mackie Mackie, they are also covered in a layer of ice because they're in the Kuiper Belt and the Kuiper Belt is very far away from the sun and very cold. None of our dwarf planets, as far as we are aware, have atmospheres which means they're not protected from those other objects around them, and sometimes they get bumped into. So if you have a look at them, they look a little bit like our moon, covered in bumps and bruises and craters. So that's what makes them similar, but what makes them different? Well, let's start with Ceres. So here is Ceres, the closest dwarf planet to our planet Earth, and it is named after the goddess of grain and harvest, which is exactly what our breakfast cereal is named after as well. So next time you are having your breakfast, you can think of that dwarf planet up there in space. 
series is pretty special because it doesn't have any seasons. Here on Earth, we have seasons because of the tilt of our planet, which is about 23 degrees. And when our Earth orbits around the Sun, it changes the distance that different parts of the planet are in relation to the Sun, meaning sometimes we're a little bit closer and sometimes we're a little bit further away from the Sun, and that's what gives us our seasons. Ceres, though, doesn't really have much of a tilt at all. It only tilts 4 degrees, which means it's pretty much straight up and down all of the time, and there's not much variation, there's not much difference in the distance that the planet is from the Sun, and hence there are no seasons. And here we are looking at Haumea, one of our Kuiper Belt objects, along with Mackie Mackie and Eris. Our Kuiper Belt objects live in our Kuiper Belt, and Haumea is pretty special because it's the only Kuiper Belt object that we know of that has a ring system. That's right, just like Saturn, our little dwarf planet Haumea has a ring system of its very own. It also looks a little bit funny as well. It's maybe not as round or as spherical as you were expecting it to be. It's what we call a Jacobi ellipsoid, and it looks a little bit more like a rugby ball. But don't worry, it is still round enough and spherical enough to be classed as a dwarf planet. Next up, we have Mackie Mackie, which was discovered in 2005. When it was first found, we were calling it the Easter Bunny. Its discovery, along with Eris, was what led the International Astronomical Union to come up with the new classification of dwarf planet. Although for a little while we thought Eris might be the 10th planet in our solar system because it's actually 28% bigger than Pluto. But instead it is a dwarf planet along with Mackie Mackie, Haumea, Ceres and of course Pluto. By and far though my favourite fact about Eris and of all our dwarf planets is the fact that on Eris it snows. And I love snow, which is why it is my favourite of all of the dwarf planets. So there we go, a quick talk and tour of our dwarf planets. Which one was your favourite and which was your favourite fact? Let us know on Facebook or Twitter. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again tomorrow for another episode of GSC at Home.